So if this game makes it past early access, it's definitely going to redefine how shooter survival games are made. So what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So Fundog Studios recently released a Q&A video answering community questions on their upcoming game. Let's break down what's discussed, including core systems like the water mechanic and character progression, along with the exciting AI behaviors, and to help bring clarity of what you can expect as a player before jumping into early access. So starting with one of the most controversial topics at the moment is the water system. Collecting and managing water provides various benefits within the game's hub, such as unlocking more inventory space, additionally, vendors or other buffs. The more water you have, the greater these benefits can be. Players who consistently engage with the game and maintain a steady water supply will enjoy these benefits more fully. Conversely, players who aren't as active might find themselves with fewer advantages. Let me explain. So it sounds like the water supply is the way to keep all the perks active in the game. Bonuses, storage space, and so forth. So if you're not logging in over a period of time, you essentially will run out of water and possibly be facing some of these setbacks. For instance, you might lose some of the progress or bonuses associated with having a full water supply and you'll need to work to regain your status. Now this feature will separate casual players who can't focus hours spent compared to the streamers and heavily game grinders that spend countless hours in the game. A comparison to Helldivers also faced criticism for its hardcore mechanics and punishing system, which some players found overly harsh. Specifically, the game featured a high difficulty level in mechanics that could lead to a significant setback or loss of progress, particularly if a player weren't consistently engaged. While the water system is designed to keep players engaged, the devs drew a similar comparison to how Animal Crossing penalizes neglect with a weed-covered island and could detour those who can't play frequently. The devs at Forever Winter are fully aware of the need to balance challenge with accessibility. They're working on making their system less harsh with adjustments to ensure that the game remains enjoyable for a broader range of players, including those who may not play as frequently. There's currently a 30 day cap on how many days of water that can be stored before diminishing returns of not logging in. However, due to the feedback, they plan to raise the limit within the 30 day mark and will make adjustments to the water death penalty to be less severe by allowing players to retain some currency and easing recovery. However, if these adjustments don't strike at the right balance, the game might still struggle to cater to players who prefer a more casual experience. So how can Forever Winter satisfy both parties with casual players and sweaty chads? Now, however, this is not a permanent solution. The answer lies in a scaling system. Essentially, it's high level players boosting low level players. When you join a game with a more experienced player, you effectively benefit from their higher level status. This means you'll have access to better loot, higher quality gear, and obtaining more resources, including water. All the loot, water, and resources you collect during the co-op session are sent back to your personal Inard, which you will return to your own world. This system allows you to leverage the resources gathered while playing with more advanced players. It means that even if you're new or not as advanced, you can still gain access to valuable items and upgrades, particularly in-game content. So essentially, playing with a high-level player can help you accelerate your own progression. So if you find yourself losing some of these diminishing returns from not logging in, is one way to get a speedy recovery. You can either stick with the players at your own skill level, ensuring a balanced and gradual progression, but ensure your playtime will need to be frequent for this option, or you can jump into a higher level games to experience in-game content and quickly gather resources. Either way, you benefit from the resources and gear collected. Now, not everyone might not want to rely on boosting as a way to progress their losses. Again, the fixes within the water system might help mitigate some of those losses. One of the details that stood out from the Q&A is that Forever Winner won't follow the usual shoot and loot formula that other games offer. Players are warned against Rambo style gameplay as reckless actions come to serious consequences. You'll die, you'll die again, and again. That's intentional. The challenge is part of the experience, and let me explain why this is. You are the little guy. 
From the moment you enter the game, you realize that you're just one small entity in a much larger scaled ecosystem. The AI factions around you are the real powerhouses. They have objectives, missions, and strategies that drive their behavior. You, on the other hand, are like an ant finding food for its colony, sneaking around while these larger forces clash in massive battles. The game isn't built around you solving every single conflict or being the most powerful force on the field. It's exactly the opposite. The shift of perspective might feel daunting, but only to find yourself surrounded by a firefight between towering mechs or swarms of drones, and in the moment, you'll realize that you're just a tiny player in their war. You can't take them head on. You're not as powerful as a soldier with the ability to single-handedly turn the tide of battle. Instead, your survival depends on your ability to adapt, outsmart, and avoid drawing too much attention. So how do the AI factions work? Each AI faction is programmed with its own distinct goals. For example, militarized factions are focused on brute force and capturing objectives. They send heavily armed mechs, tanks, and drones to secure and overpower their enemies. Technological factions use advanced hacking tools, drones, and electronic warfare to disable or outsmart opponents rather than engage in direct combat. Scavenger factions are similar to agile groups that avoid head-on fights focusing on gathering resources while staying out of the way of larger factions. Resistance or civilian factions use guerrilla tactics, laying traps, and launching surprise attacks on more powerful enemies. These factions operate based on the battlefield conditions. They don't view the player as a central figure. Instead, they focus on their own objectives, whether that's capturing area, securing resources, or eliminating other enemy factions. The AI uses a system of weight class and threat rating, which helps them decide who to target. A heavily mech might prioritize attacking another mech of similar size and strength. Smaller units like scavengers would be ignored unless they pose a significant threat or there's no larger threat nearby. As the battle evolves, the factions interact with one another clashing naturally. Over time, they send in larger, stronger units or adjust their strategies to adapt to the changing battlefield conditions. This creates moments where fights between AI factions can shift the balance of power, making the outcome of these battles even more unpredictable. Survival as the little guy, however, has its advantages. Despite being small or relatively weak, you can use your position to your advantage. You're not seen as a major threat. You can often move unnoticed through the battle zones. While the big AI factions are focused on each other, you can sneak around, loot resources, and complete your own objectives. For instance, if two factions are locked in a firefight, you can slip through their ranks unnoticed, gathering supplies or completing missions while they're distracted. Alongside, being small and agile allows you to also manipulate the battlefield. You can provoke one faction into attacking another or lead enemies into other factions' paths, causing them to clash while you quietly escape or take advantage of the chaos. This is where the game shines in rewarding clever strategies over brute force. It's a game where being smart, patient, and observant is far more valuable than being strong, and where the biggest threats are often completely indifferent to your presence. However, being the little guy has its dangers. The larger AI faction doesn't care about your survival and can easily get caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. A firefight could break out or a patrol might stumble upon you while you're pursuing another faction. If you're not careful, you can find yourself trapped between two warring factions with no way out but to run or hide. The early access phase will last as long as needed, allowing the team to fine tune and expand the game. They're focusing on adding new maps and significantly improving AI, especially how enemies target players. Early issues like awkward enemy movements and poor targeting are being addressed to enhance the overall gameplay experience. Additionally, loot tables are getting a much needed overhaul as beta players found it difficult to gather essential items like drone parts. Going over console and co-op consideration is a major question on everyone's mind was whether Forever Winter would come to consoles. The team joked about a Game Boy Advance release and seriously stated that the discussion for console ports are ongoing. However, nothing will be confirmed until 
after early access. So to wrap it up here, Forever Winter is shaping up to be an exciting project with a mix of hardcore survival mechanics and community input is important. The water system is bold and sometimes polarizing, a feature that could really define the game's future. Casual players might find it intensely a bit overwhelming, but the developers are working to balance the experience. The devs are taking player feedback seriously and are committed to finding the right balance between challenge and accessibility. So as we head into early access, I'm generally excited about what the game has to offer and can't wait to experience the chaos of being just the little guy and how the AI and factions are in the dystopian futuristic world. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. So the release is set for September 24th. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest updates and thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.